So the first limit example that I'm going to work is using the second technique. Technique one is to plug in and see what you get. And the thing is, I, I should do that, and I am going to do that. I'm going to plug five in first and see what happens. And you might be wondering, do I really have to do this? This is really stupid. But yeah, you, you need to do this. I mean, you got to see what happens when you plug in. It might actually work. And if it does work, you're done. So technique one is to just plug the number here in for X and see what you get. So on the top here, I get 25, take away 25. On the bottom, I get 25, take away 20, take away 5. 25 minus 25 is 0. 25, take away 20, take away 5 is 0. So this is undefined, right? This is BS. This is no good. You can't have this. So I tried to plug in, which is technique 1, and it didn't work. So now I'm going to try technique 2. Well, I can cross out the x squared. Look, you, you got x squared here. You got x squared here. You can just cross them out. Look. Choo. So we call that dumbassery. You don't want to do anything dumbass. You cannot cross out these x squared. This is moronic, okay? It doesn't work that way. So the only thing you can do is factor. I mean, when you see x squared thingies, you should always think factor. The top one is called a difference of perfect squares. X squared and 25 are both perfect squares. So this is going to be x plus 5, x minus 5. Now look, I'm going to stop for a second and give you a little analysis. This is the dude that's screwing you up. Because if you put 5 in there, you get 0. So I'm hoping that I get another x minus 5 on the bottom to knock this one out. And then I don't have to worry about getting the zeros anymore when I plug in. So I'm going to factor the bottom. And I mean, give me a break. If you can't factor this, go back to the remedial math class and you'll learn it there. I need two numbers whose product is five. I mean, hello. There's only two numbers whose product is five. <laughs> now you just have to make sure you get your signs right. The bigger number has to have this sign. So there you go. Now I'm going to cross out. Yay! See, the x minus 5 is what's screwing up the whole thing. So I'm going to cross the dude out. Sorry, it looks bad. Remember, you got to write limb until you plug in, as annoying as it might seem. You haven't computed the limit yet. Why is the limb there? The limb is there because I'm trying to evaluate a limit. Until I plug this number in for x, I haven't computed anything yet. So you have to write it there. Notice, it's there, it's there, it's there. I'm going to plug in in my next step. I got rid of the dude who was giving me a problem, which was the x minus 5. That is why I was getting a 0 on the bottom, is because the bottom term, the bottom expression, had an x minus 5 as one of its factors. So plugging in 5 created a 0 there. The problem's over. It's done. Plug 5 into the top. Notice I'm not writing lim anymore. <gasps> Where did the lim go? I'm evaluating it. I'm plugging in. 5 plus 5 is 10. 5 plus 1 is 6. Oh, it's over. It's easy. They're both even. Cut them in half. I expect you to reduce. You're in calculus. You can tell me what 10 over 6 is. I don't want decimal. I don't want mixed numbers. 5 over 3 is your answer, okay? So technique 2. I plugged in. It didn't work. I got 0 over 0. I factored the top. I factored the bottom. I crossed out the troublesome common factor. Then I plugged in and it's over. Very simple. As long as you factor correctly, you're careful with your signs. should have no problem with this at all. Okay. Okay. Example number two. Fraction. It looks scary. Remember the first thing you try, technique one. Plug this number in everywhere you see x. When you plug it into the top, you get 1 over 4. Take away 1 over 4 which is 0. And on the bottom, you get 4, take away 4, which is 0. So again, you get this undefined BS that doesn't work. I mean, you got to do it anyway. You got to plug the number in first and see what happens. So I did. Now, I don't know what the hell to do with this. I mean, there's no factoring. The only thing I could possibly do would be to try to take the two fractions on the top and combine them into one but I know that if I want to do that, I have to make the bottoms the same. All right, the only way you can add or subtract two fractions is if you make the bottoms identical. And these are algebraic fractions. So I have to figure out what the common denominator would be. 
this bottom has an X and this one has a four. So this fraction needs an X there to match that X. And this fraction needs a four there to match that four. So I'm just going to give each one what it doesn't have. And yes, this is part of your work that you have to show me. Make the bottoms the same. This fraction needed a four. And look, you have to multiply the top and bottom by four. All right. Don't try to get cute and be like, I'm just going to put one big ass four there. Four times one over X is four over X. So if I see you write this, then it shows me that you don't know what the hell you're talking about. And I'm going to mark it wrong. You have to put the four on the top and the bottom and the X in the top and the bottom. Make the bottoms the same, right? Multiply the top. Now, again, you got you to gotta just write it all out. I'm going to multiply four times one on top. X times one over there. What's the new bottom? 4X, right? Combine. You can combine them all into one here. This fraction becomes 4 over 4X. This one becomes X over 4X. Bottoms are the same. Subtract the tops. Keep the bottom. And you're like, what the hell did you do now? I don't know what to do. I mean, you should be seeing something here, but I'm going to show it to you really explicitly. So it's really, really clear. On the top, look, you have a fraction divided. I mean, it's a fraction where the top is a fraction. So you have this fraction on top divided by this dude on the bottom. You see that, right? You have 4 minus x on top over 4x divided by, right? What does the line mean? The line means divided by. Now, you guys should know the rule, right? When you divide... When you have fractions and you're dividing, you flip, right? Keep change, flip. This thing will change the multiplication. That will flip over. Notice I'm writing limb the whole time. So you get 4 minus x over 4x times, right? The dividing becomes times, and then this dude flips over. How do you flip that over? Like that, right? If it helps you, put the 1 there. Flip. Keep change, flip. This switches to multiplication that flips over. Now, pow, you cross out the troublesome dude. Again, the 4 minus x on the bottom was effing up this whole question. As soon as you plug a 4 into the bottom, you get a 0. Done. The problem is screwed. So your whole goal, this whole question, is to kill that 4 minus x on the bottom. Once you get rid of it, now what's left over? This dude crossed out. This dude crossed out. I'm left with this. I know I'm getting close to the bottom, and I know I write on an angle. <laughs> That's it. Plug in the 4. You get 1 over 4 times 4, which is 1 over 16. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Once you got rid of the 4 minus x, the problem's done. You're able to plug in nice and clean. Now, yes, manipulating the fractions is a bit of a pain, but all I did, I plugged in just to make sure it doesn't work, and I knew it wouldn't. I mean, I already know that 4 minus 4 is 0, so it's like, why bother? But I showed it anyway. But the only thing I can do here is to combine those fractions into 1 and hope somehow that it allows me to knock out the term on the bottom. And it did. Okay, so that's the second example of technique 3.